listeners and subscribers, all is not well. Okay, so if you guys have been paying attention, you know that there's a lot going on, more than anyone can really keep up with, to be honest with you. And I remember a time where things unfolded maybe once or twice a week, and you wanted to get out there and talk about it. Now things are happening virtually every day where you need to get out and talk about it, you know. And it's hard to just, it's hard to keep up, you know, it, it, re it really is. Especially when you've got a job, and you're you're holding down things at home, you know, and you're trying to let other people know about this stuff because it's, it behooves you. So there's just a lot going on. Let's let's talk about a few things here. Uh, there was a clip I included in a video. I think it was my last video where you know Donald Trump's giving this interview to this reporter and he's talking about how he doesn't want to go to war with Iran. He doesn't like wars. Uh, he doesn't want to fight. Wars kill kill people. Okay. But then just before that, and actually immediately right after, okay, sandwiched in between it, we see aggression towards Iran. This is what we're talking about. Trump is saying we don't want engagement with Iran, essentially, but we're arming the United Arab Emirates, we're arming Saudi Arabia, and we're arming Jordan, citing raising tensions over Iran. So what's going on there? Essentially war by proxy. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff that's go going on with the Saudi Arabia. The, you know, so the Saudis have been friends with the United States for a long time. As a matter of fact, they were implicated in helping the uh 911 terrorists okay and the thing is is Saudi Arabia there was reports of Saudi Arabia having to pump water into their uh, reserves just to get enough pressure to get to get some of their oil out all right and maybe that's why we see the destabilization towards Iran and Venezuela I mean Venezuela has the largest proven oil reserves Okay, and we see the destabilization happening there and how America's angling themselves there. And we also see what's going on with Iran, these geopolitical tensions. And that's not even to mention what's going on with Mexico, uh, Japan, and the U.S. Chinese trade war. So it's, a, it's a lot going on in that sense. And we've seen these scenarios play out before, right? arming terrorists or arming factions in the hopes of supporting their initiatives that also support uh, U.S. initiatives across the field. So it just seems like detrimental, detrimental engagement with Iran is going to happen uh, no, matter, no matter what we think, okay? And what's really been strange, I mean, there's a lot of strangeness that's been going on. I mean, have you guys been hearing about the tornadoes that have been touching down? With the tornadoes, it was... 13 or 14 consecutive days that devastating tornadoes were touching down. And a lot of people talk about, you know, climate change and global warming. And I said it before when we were talking about that Arctic vortex or the polar vortex that was hanging over the United States, I think at the beginning of the year, that you're having an incomplete conversation if you're chalking everything up to global warming or climate change and you're not talking at all about uh, geoengineering. If you're not talking about geoengineering, if you're not talking about uh, the initiatives from Harvard, uh, from Harvard, from climatechange.org, from NASA, if you're not taking these things into account where they're using the atmosphere basically as a laboratory and that's what they say, then you're having an incomplete conversation. You can't talk about climate change and global warming without taking into consideration the geoengineering campaigns that are happening all over the world. So, you know, you folks that want to talk about that, to say, oh, look at these tornadoes and this is so strange, you've got to look at the geoengineering, at the cloud seeding. You've got to look at the solar radiation management and the stratospheric aerosol injections. These are what you have to talk about if you want to have a complete conversation about climate change and global warming, that period. And the way that one of the articles that came out, I think it was in the early 2000s, there's a couple of them now, where they talk about how scientists have long had the ability to bounce lasers off the ionosphere, uh, heat water in a certain area and steer hurricanes away from population centers okay there i mean this technology exists out there they were you know hooting and hollering saying oh we might finally be able to uh, mitigate some of the effects of these devastating storms and steer them away from population centers that they can decrease the velocity and steer it away well what does that tell you if they can decrease the velocity and steer it away from population centers then that means they can increase the velocity and steer it towards population centers i don't know did we see that with Katrina, with Harvey? I don't know. But the ability is out there, and even the mainstream news media has touched on it. So you guys are having an incomplete conversation when you're talking about, you know, this weather, okay? And another thing that's been coming across the, the radar, I've long touted that we've been undergoing a conditioning process, okay? And now even the mainstream media, and they long have, but first, you know, when you I'm talking about UFOs here, and when you mentioned UFOs, you had a snicker in the same breath, but it's not like that anymore. Now that the Navy and, you know, Army is changing the way that they report on UFOs, okay? 
okay, now you have, uh, you know, Tucker interviewing these pilots and admirals who've seen things. Mainstream media is really starting to warm up to this idea of UFOs, and the reality is, is I don't think they are uh, what people think they are. Sure, I think that there's something going on, you know, secret space, craft, secret craft and, and stuff like this, but I also think these entities might be just a little bit different than what... Uh, is typically out there than what people are typically thinking that's out there. Okay, I think we're undergoing a conditioning process. And that's why we're starting to see all this UFO news surface in the mainstream media. It's just, it's interesting. Because I think one of the cards they have in this deck, so to speak, is, is going to tie us into a type of paradigm shift that nobody is as prepared for. That very few okay has prepared for and we've i've teased out the ideas before about you know project blue beam and and things like that they have i think they have a lot of scenarios ready to unfold based on our perception of things i think that's why they often do tests okay they put things out in the media they do you know the war of the worlds right back in the 1930s i think it was they do these things to gauge the populations uh, where they're at where, just where they're at mentally, their, their cognition, and what they're willing to accept and not willing to accept, and how they'll respond to a lot of this stuff. And I think based on our responses to this stuff is sort of where they go and how they decide what cards to play. I mean, and you guys have got to understand about that, about the technology they have tucked away. And I've made, I've made a, the point before, especially in a post where I was talking about technology, where we saw the Tupac hologram, Celine Dion, and Elvis holograms, the water dragon. Okay, this stuff they have somewhere tucked away in, in research labs that's far beyond what we've seen. All right, and just like we we now have the voice morphing technology that people are becoming more familiar with, you know, with Joe Rogan, okay, and the deep fakes that we see as well. Joe Rogan has a deep fake out there. This stuff that people tout is new. This stuff isn't new, okay. The former commander in chief of the U.S. Special Operations Command, General Carl Steiner, sat in amazement as he listened to a, a recording of his own voice saying, "You know, gentlemen, we've called you together to inform you that we're going to overthrow the United States government." Okay, this guy had never said anything like that. This was a test done at the Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory. Okay, it was voice morphing technology. The the digital capacity of taking a, a part of your voice, just a little snippet of your voice, and being able to synthesize that and make you say something you never said. Okay, just like just like uh, just like Steiner. And that wasn't the only incident of this. There was Colin Powell, where uh, they had him say, I'm being treated well by my captors, okay? And that was announced in, in 1999, meaning they had it at least 10 years earlier, and now the stuff that we're being released now means it means they had it earlier than that, and this is the incidence of that. So the voice morphing technology that we see, okay, the deep fakes, we've long had that. And we, we've seen the composite imagery. That's essentially what the deep fakes is. Uh, if you're familiar with the Kennedy case at all, Oswald told the Dallas police that that's my face, but that's not my body. That's a composite image, which sounds like today's deep fakes. Okay, they've had this ability. We've long had the technology in some lab. So the question is now, what potential do they have hidden away for us um, that we just might not be ready for? We have to think about how they can utilize technology that we don't necessarily understand or know that's out there against us for psychological operations, false flags, and these things that carry us into trajectories um, that aren't good for us but seem to be good for the power pyramid players. And again, I use these examples of the voice morphing technology, the deep fakes and composite imagery to show you that the technology that's coming out now, you know, now in 2019, they've been they teased uh, before as early as 1999 and even earlier than that. So what makes you think this stuff is new? There's really hardly anything new under the sun, really. Right. So there's a lot of stuff out there that they could be using against us to warp our perceptions of what's really going on. But like I said, you know, like I said, with this, with the tornadoes touching down, okay, you got to consider about the weather technology. That's why I mentioned, you know, the holograms and uh, things like that. You've got to, you've got to look at the the UFO phenomenon that's happening. We're undergoing a conditioning process there. Looking at the engagements that we're seeing, both. Uh, Basically, physical warlike engagements and engagements on the economic level where we're starting to see uh, detrimental blowbacks. Okay, American citizens are finally starting to see uh, some of the some of the cons that's really happening from the trade war, from the engagement on the geopolitical level that's coming back to bite us. I know I threw a lot at you at once here, but there's a lot going on and there's a lot more to come. California Carter signing off.